When we ride, we must protect our eyes. Ed Schneider and Julie Maioli from Team USA to ride here. When we go for a ride, we're always protected with 7 eye performance eyewear. That's right, Ed. These high-tech sunglasses prevent dry eyes are super resistant and look great too. Learn more and get yours at 7eye.com. Stand out from the crowd with your next helmet. Safety and technology meet style and design. Next helmets offer the coolest models and styles like the aggressive XT1 Raptor and the Uber Cold Switch. Next helmets exceed DOT standards and are available only at the best motorcycle accessory stores. Find the store nearest you at nextnorthamerica.com. Welcome to USA to Ride, the show where Eduardo and Julie hit the roads on two wheels to bring you the best of the motorcycle world. We will talk to experts, shop owners, and mechanics and share the best places to go, maintenance tips, stories from the road, and much more. Rev up your engines. Here is Eduardo Schneider and Julie Maioli. Hello, welcome to another edition of USA to Ride on WNN 1470. <laughs> I love the closed calls. I love the closed calls. Hello, hello. Hey. <laughs> hello. Hi. Hello. It's 630. <laughs> this is a live show, everybody. You can watch us live at USA to Ride.com. Click on the live button and you can call us 1-888-565-1470. We're always on facebook.com slash USA to ride and you can always email us talk, uh, talk to us change ideas at info at USA to ride.com We are team USA to ride. I'm the cruiser guy Ed Schneider and next to me sporty girl Julie Maioli and just I want to remind everybody that uh, USA to ride show is brought to you by Eagle Rider motorcycles and We have a lot to talk about Eagle Rider motorcycles today. Oh, today is a lot yeah. of with Good stuff. For, it's for, well, first right. of all, let's talk about the keyword that we're going to give through all the oh, show for tonight. For sure, for sure. So, for those of you who are uh, riding on Saturday, you want to ride with a free oil change, a free filter change, and a free 20 point inspection on your bike. That's how your day is going to start on Saturday. If you are one of the first four bikes that show up at Eagle Rider Fort Lauderdale or Eagle Rider Miami this Saturday morning, be one of the first four bikes. To show up first and four with the keyword Good. that we have on the screen for those of you that are watching on usatry.com slash live the keyword is julie 1992 why 1992 who picked that wow well do you know why 1992 i don't know that's what i'm asking okay so little, i have a little story about it, and for sure everybody has to know because this big big store like uh, Eagle Rider starts in 19... There we go. It was founded. So, Eagle Rider was yes. founded in 1992. So anybody riding with us on Saturday? If they don't have to ride with us. Oh, they just... They can, they can go there. We're going to have our ride on Saturday, but you know what? Let's say you're going to ride with your motorcycle club or you have some other plans or something like that. We understand. Yeah. But you know what? Why miss the opportunity? Go down to Eagle Rider for Florida. Eagle Rider Miami. And just go there and say, look, I have the keyword. I heard on USA to Ride, yeah. the radio show, I have the keyword. I know it's 1992. Do I get my oil change? They're going to say, are you one of the first four bikes that show up? If the answer is yes, yes. You do get your free oil change, free filter change, and a multi uh, uh, free multi-point multi -point. inspection. Yes. Nice. But they have to hear it here at USA exactly. to Ride exactly. to get that. Yeah. The, the keyword is not advertised anywhere else. Anywhere. Beautiful. You, you know? hear that? Yep. So, you know, just go there and say, 1992. 1992. That was a good year. How about you? Did you like that year? It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember because I was born in 1992. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, born again, maybe. Better for the gray hair was born. <laughs> And also remember okay. that uh, USA no Eagle Rider is a great place for you to buy your bike, mm -hmm. to sell your bike, to rent your bike, and to service your bike. You know that they changed their logo recently from Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals to Eagle Rider Motorcycles because they're a full service shop now. Absolutely. You know, and they pay and cash they, for your bike. They rent dreams. They okay. rent dreams, and you can rent all kinds of different dreams. And not only can you rent the dreams, is you can look good while you're renting because they got the best clothing there. That's true. They also yeah. have that frequent riders program where 
you know, you get points that you can get a free bike to rent for a day or two days or a whole week. $29 a month, you Membership. become a member of the Club Eagle Rider, and you get one free rental a month. You get 15% off apparel, you get 15% off service, you get so many discounts and benefits. Now, rent is two fifty a day, yeah. so that's just for twenty nine dollars. Exactly, and, yeah, and a few. Yeah, and depending on what you rent, it's we have from more bucks to, yeah. to talk about because uh, Eagle Ride is gonna do a ride with yeah. a a, ver, a, a large uh, kinds of uh, giveaways. So yeah. in a few minutes, going we're gonna talk about. We're gonna get okay, that. Okay. If you want to talk to Eagle Rider, nine five four five one four seven two three zero nine five four five one four Seven two three zero. Call them. Talk to Phil, to Travel, to Mark, to Steve. All the good people there. They're all nice guys. They're all there. nice guys. And tell them you heard it here at USA to Ride. Always. Nineteen ninety two. Tonight we'll talk about road experiences, and we have a lot of different guests here. People are sitting outside just waiting for their chance to come in. Mark Allen, Peter Allen, Schultz. Uh, it's going to be a great show. We have. Robert Chinook, the attorney that rides. The attorney with us. that rides. <laughs> 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 and we have Brenda Martin to talk about a lot of good things. Um, we're going to take a very, very quick commercial break mm -hmm. and we're going to be right back. Wow. Stand out from the crowd with your next helmet. Safety and technology meet style and design. Next helmets offer the coolest models and styles like the aggressive XT1 Raptor and the uber cool Switch. Next helmets exceed DOT standards and are available only at the best motorcycle accessory stores. Find the store nearest you at nextnorthamerica.com. When we ride, we must protect our eyes. Ed Schneider and Julie Maioli from Team USA to ride here. When we go for a ride, we're always protected with 7 eye performance eyewear. That's right, Ed. These high-tech sunglasses prevent dry eyes are super resistant and look great too. Learn more and get yours at 7i.com. All right, we're back here at the studio WNN 1470 AM in Boca Raton, Florida. And we're going to start straight with our calendar of events for this weekend because this is going to be a busy one. All right, this is how it's going to start, okay? Everybody get your bike ready for Saturday because USA to Ride has the official ride to Stewart coming out of Moto Cafe at 3556 North Ocean Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale, right, right north of um, Oakland Park Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. So we're going to have breakfast there. We're going to meet there uh, starting at 8 a.m. And um, kick stand up at 10. Kick stands up at 10. Uh, people sometimes ask, well, it's two hours between us, uh, um, you know, meeting there and breakfast and, stand and kick stand up because the breakfast is so good. You know, yes. so we and like there is a lot of things to see in that store. Yeah. Amazing stuff, amazing and, you know, gear. How so many people have made you know new fr new friendships there? You know, on our rides because we spend there a little more time. You know, we spend a little more time there in the morning. People get to see what's good at the store and all that. Some people are shopping there. You know, some people are trying jackets and all that. So uh, this is our USA to Ride official ride. We do that once a month out of Moto Cafe. So again, it's thirty five fifty six North Ocean Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. That's on December nineteenth. 8 a.m. We meet there. We're gonna have raffles. We're gonna give away Gift some uh, Wrangler jeans. Uh, Gift certificate. Gift certificates to Moto Cafe. Yes, fifty dollars. Yep. Fifty dollars gift certificates. Yeah. Um, and then uh, beautiful breakfast. And at 10 a.m. we take off. And this time we're going to Stewart. Everybody riding with us this Saturday gets 10 percent off their checks at the restaurant we're going. Nice. Yeah, it's something that you know it's exclusive for USA to Ride riders. You know, it's it's ten percent off your check. So whatever you drink or eat, that's ten percent off your check. Eagle Rider. Eagle Rider. Now Eagle Rider National Ride Open House. So thing. yeah, we're we're riding our official ride on Saturday. Then we're joining Eagle Rider on Sunday. So Eagle Rider, this is a national event. So Eagle Rider all over the country is doing a national ride and open house on December twentieth. It starts at nine a.m. From Eagle Rider, both Eagle Riders, Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Miami. So whatever you know, you're close to. Um, I believe the Miami ride is going to go down to the Keys, and uh, we don't know yet. The Fort Lauderdale one is still a secret. Our good friend Eric Sprague is going to lead that group. We're going to oh, try and yes, find for out. Sure. Well, who yeah. knows where we'll end up there? Hey, we have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a surprise. We know it's a be lot fun. of surprise. Yeah. actually. Well, the uh, the both rides are gonna end actually at Eagle Ride in Miami. There's gonna be a bike wash. There's gonna be a barbecue. There's gonna be hamburgers, hot dogs. 
uh, there's gonna, they're going to be giving away a $250 service uh, certificate, 50% off jackets coupon, uh, coupons for oil change. Um, somebody's going to get a 24-hour uh, free rentals. And there's a lot of, a lot more stuff. There's a ton of stuff that they're going to give. Um, I mean, you know, this is what our friend Eric put. What other company has an organized ride and gives the riders a bike to take on the ride? Um, you know, because you can actually join. If you join the Club Eagle Rider right now, you get a free. You get a free ride that day. Exactly, ride yes, that day. That's There's, true. You have to you have to register online though. For register yes. online before before Book the Sunday. Reservation, yes. Book the reservation. You, there's a code. Use the code E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, R as in Richard, one five E N R fifteen, and uh, you actually gonna get already one bonus free rental this month that you can use for this ride. Wow. So you can go with us for free, you know, just by joining Club uh, Club Eagle Rider. Um, so we'll see you all guys there. We, Julie and I, Team USA to Ride, we'll go to the Eagle Rider Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we're going to all meet at Eagle Rider Miami anyway. That's it. I got to move south. You got to move way too far north. I live you too are. far. You are. You, 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 have, you need you to come back come. to civilization. <laughs> yeah. Nothing's you know. happening in Daytona except for bike week. That's once a year. I'm not even up in Daytona. Oh. I'm like stuck in the middle. The funny thing is that you're gonna you're gonna move south and we're gonna ride right up there. Mm. It's okay. Yeah, I don't mind riding. No, yes, I we can visit your, your house. Right. That I, well, I'm, yeah, you'll have to pass my house to get to Stewart. There so. you go. There you we'll go. give you a ride. We'll put your road king on the back of our bike. There you are. Right. Um, so let's talk quickly about uh, some really cool events that. We, uh, one of them that we participated, we're very proud uh, this year to have been media partners with the 2015 Migrant Kids Toy Run. Amazing event. We went down to Florida City with over 200 bikers. And That's uh, great. I gotta tell you, this, um, you know, you, you, you see all the bikers coming in, you know, with a, their leather jackets, with their collars on and all that. And that, you know, during that event, you don't see a single dry eye. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the video, uh, Freddy, if you're ready to roll the our migrant, uh, migrant Kids Toy Run from Saturday. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we got the video. If we got the video, Kenny, we just can get ready to roll our, the audio too. We're just waiting for it. There you go. Sometimes it doesn't take much to lend a helping hand to those in need. And that's exactly what over 200 riders did last Sunday when they joined the 2015 edition of the Migrant Kids Toy Run, an event that distributes toys, shoes, and many other goodies to underprivileged children in South Miami-Dade County. The event that was created by Ed Carrera over a decade ago has been supported by the late founder of the Chrome Knights Motorcycle Association, Rene Sardinia, his wife Carmen, their goddaughter Jenny Love, and of course, members of the Chrome Knights. This year, over 250 kids started to line up in front of the RCMA Child Development Center in Florida City before sunrise in hopes of getting a Christmas gift, something most of the parents in this community would not be able to afford. Star Wars figurines, Legos, Barbie dolls and scooters filled the playground creating a small Christmas village that included a Santa Claus that looked just as real as it gets. Of course, wearing a Harley Davidson t-shirt. Once the riders arrived, a line was formed to move even more toys into the playground under the close supervision of Miami-Dade County Commissioner Jose Pepe Diaz. Then each rider would take a child by the hand and take them through the cycle of activities, picking up a toy, visiting Santa, getting a slice of pizza and a delicious cake. And although the month of December is normally filled with toy runs everywhere, Bikers who participated in the Migrant Kids Toy Run got to see the children walking home with their new toy. And while they walk home with a smile on their faces, the big challenge here was to find a biker without tears in their eyes. Team USA to Ride was there and talked to Jenny Love, Commissioner Jose Pepe Diaz, Ed Carrera and Carmen Sardinia. This is a beautiful event that I've been a member of for quite a few years. I got involved because of my godparents, Carmen and Renee, and it's my favorite run because we get to have this sort of interaction with the children. 
We are we are blessed in our community in in the United States and especially in South Florida that we we really have a good way of life and we're blessed. But there's many that aren't. And in this case, these are migrant workers that uh, really just try to put food on the table when possible for their kids. So Ed uh, Carrera, which is my dear friend of Marine also, and a person that I care a lot about, he also cares a lot. He's got a big heart. And he put this together with another gentleman that unfortunately passed away a couple of days ago, and um, Rene Sardinia. And t together, and they reached out to a lot of people to find a way to get toys to bring once a year to this event that's called the Migrant Run. It's an overwhelming feeling of blessings. It's incredible. Um, we're giving over 240 kids. Right now we're giving about 242, 260 kids. Toys and shoes and socks and pizza and cake and food and Santa Claus and it's all about Christmas. Oh my gosh, they get a ton of stuff. They get pizza, cake, water, chips, toys, book bags with shoes and socks and coloring books and crayons and they get to meet Santa and they get to see all the wonderful bikes. As a community, we come together. And myself, as an elected official, I don't think there's better ways to express ourselves than to help others. So these kids are underprivileged, unfortunately. And so we give them and make them feel like all the kids. And that's what's important. But, uh, we all realize that uh, we're fortunate to be here, to have what we have. But we also realize that there are others that need our help that aren't as fortunate. And whenever we can, we reach out and we help them in whatever way we can. A lot of us, like myself, uh, are immigrants. We landed in this country with nothing. And the first coat that I wore in uh, the cold uh, in the winter was donated. So I've never forgotten that. And I uh, try to give back, uh, and this is a good way for us to do it. Nobody profits from this. This is a bring a toy, put it in the kids' hands, and uh, make a smile. Bikers are awesome, and they rock. That's what it tells them. Don't be scared of bikers. Everybody's scared of bikers. They're the best people in the world. May thank God and um, Renee that made sure that our, our buddy that it didn't rain on us because rain was everywhere. But look, it's still sunny and, and great here. Bigger and better every year. We're going to kick butt and take names. That's right. That's it. All right, we're back we're into the back. studio. This yeah. is USA 3 Island W and then 1470. Uh, for those of you watching us on USA 3 slash live, the, uh, there's a little bit of video still going on, but uh, we're going to keep going here. And uh, in just one minute, you guys are going to be with us. All right. And for those of you watching on USA 3 slash live, you should be back with us now. Hello. Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> another uh, event that uh, took place this uh, Sunday. Um, actually, I'm sorry, this Saturday, was uh, put together by our good friend Rick Hans from Broward County Riders. And uh, this is Fred, if you're ready. Yeah, Fred is already showing yes. the video there. So <clears throat> close to a, a hundred sport riders showed up for this ride. And uh, the event started with a meeting for lunch at Champs Fort Lauderdale. They actually get the, they got the Champs burger and soda and fries and all that good stuff for 10 bucks. Yes. I should have gone there. <clears throat> and, uh, and thanks for Mark Grados that uh, give us the, the, the pictures. Images, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, now shout All out to the... All these pictures uh, are from Mark Grados and a uh, shout out to South, South Florida, Florida Tri-County Tri Riders. Yes. Absolutely. Thanks for the uh, support. And, uh, you know, I got to tell you, getting 100, 100 sport bikes on the road, um, you know, going on US1, on A1A, um, and, uh, you know, Imagine. going up to Lake Park. and Take a look. <clears throat> look at that. Wow. Riding stagger formation and all that. I, you know, I, I take my hat off to uh, to these guys that uh, they, they they really know how to you know behave on the road and how to do something safe on sport bikes. Um, you know, really really cool stuff and uh, very colorful. Very nice to see you guys out there. Look at what a beautiful day that was for those of you watching usa ridecom slash live. How many bikes? Beautiful sunny day. Yeah, I'm close to a hundred sport bikes riding uh, on on A1A. That uh, scares the bejesus out of the people in Boca Raton. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not used to that riding around their town. Nah, no, no, they're no. not. No, they're used to us riding around town on our, you know, the the, the Harleys and uh, you know, not that they like it there anyway. But um, okay, all right, so <laughs> so um, let's go here. Thank you, Mark. Thank friend. you, Rick. 
Thank you, everybody from the Broward County Riders and the South Florida uh, Tri County Riders. Um, you know, you guys know that when life throws a curveball, we count on the help of who? Attorney Rob Sanook. The not, attorney that rides. The attorney that rides. Yes. He, not only he's a rider like us, you know, he is actually has 25 years of litigation experience. He handles family law, criminal defense, federal and state cases. You got business related issues, you got to talk to Robert Sanook. Call him for a free consultation at 561 302 5297. But tonight you can call at 1 88 565 1470 because he's right here. He's right here. And you know what? We you ask, can get your consultation right just, here. Just call right just now. Just calling. And you know what? Um, over the uh, last two weeks, we've asked a lot of uh, people, uh, you know, off off the air about, uh, you know, do you have questions to a lawyer, you know, to an attorney? Uh, you know, we have we yes. have one that can help. So here are a few of the questions that we got, Julie. Okay, first. Dr. Roberts. Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dr. Law. Oh, exactly. Yeah. You see? Dr. Law. Yeah. The I've run. been the, the question. I've been a victim of a hit and run. What do I do and what are my options? That, that's a tough question because if you don't know who hit you, it's hard for you to know who right. to go after. But of course call the police immediately. Uh, they'll take over and, and handle most of the issues that come up. Uh, hopefully someone will have spotted whoever hit you or, or got involved in the accident. Maybe you're lucky there's cameras around, but until you can identify who hits you, there's not much you can do. Now, if, if somebody takes the, the license plate after the fact, can you do something about oh, it? Oh, certainly. If, if, if they have a license plate or something, at least they can look at the investigate it. That's great. Um, but there may be other issues that come up. Maybe the area where the, it was unsafe to, to uh, cross or the city or someone might have a violation. So after you call the police, Always call an attorney, and they'll be able to handle it from there. And in this case, uh, a good witness uh, will be the the the, the key, the, the key, key, the key decisive factor solve. here. Probably is is the way. Just yeah, that's the best way. Anybody anybody who sees or watches. I mean, I've had witnesses who were a hundred yards away and right there at the scene. So that's why the police are invaluable in that situation. They have the resources and they'll get right on it. They, okay. That's because a crime's been committed. That right. makes it a priority for them. Okay. okay. Second one. Someone parked their bike too, too close to mine and I can get out. What's happened if I move their bike out of the way? Well, if you move it, that's fine. You know, you're not, unless, unless they see and think you're stealing <laughs> it. Uh, uh, but if you move it and you damage it, then you're going to be liable for the damages. You know, obviously that's a problem. You know, try and find out whose who bike it is. Go inside if it's at a bar or a store. You know, see if they'll make an announcement. Um, I don't like people touching my bike. Right. Neither do I. So, so uh, uh, you know, be patient. You know, I find that patience sometimes avoids problems. But if you if you have to move it, you absolutely have to go. Uh, you know, you're kind of taking a risk that uh, something happens, then you're going to be liable. And um, if you move the wrong person's bike. You might have more than liability. Yeah, right? and unfortunately, that happens a lot during uh, whether you know it's bike nights or bike events, like you know Daytona Bike Week, where everybody parks like so close. You know, uh, you got you got you got to be conscious about you know you don't know which bike you're moving, you don't know the owner of the bike, so you got no. you got to think about that as well. Yes. Third, I just bought a bike and paid cash for it. Do I need to purchase insurance? You have to have insurance if you're riding or driving in Florida. It's mandatory. So if you ride without insurance, you can be ticketed just for not having insurance. Do you know a lot of people think that because they ride a motorcycle, they don't need insurance in the state of Florida? Yeah. Your automobile policy does not cover you while you ride a bike. It's I a understand. separate policy. And, and if you, obviously, if you get hurt on a bike or you're hit, you know, God forbid there's an accident, your injury is going to be much greater than you would in a vehicle. So not to have insurance and riding a motorcycle is just plain stupid. Right. Okay. Have to have That's it. a common misconception in the state of Florida. There's a, several people that I have talked to that feel that they live in Florida and their bike is paid for, they don't need insurance. And, uh, and how about the, the people that comes, uh, tourists that rent the bikes? Mm -hmm. um, uh, they have to have uh, the insurance in, from your country or the the, the, the rental company? The rental company, yeah, the rental company, company usually provides. will have a policy they'll provide. Like with you go in a car, it's very similar. Uh, it's very expensive, but you know it's always common sense to get extra insurance because on a motorcycle, if you get injured, the injuries are always much greater than in a vehicle. So 
maximize your coverage. I always push, push, push for maximum coverage, especially uninsured or underinsured motorists. You don't want to count on somebody else's insurance taking care of you and then stack it so you so it's more than just you that get injured. It'll still be stacked, and then you can get the, the double benefit on top of it. It's a little more expensive, but your life's worth more. Okay. Okay, moving. I stopped for a police officer. Police officer. Police officers, and now I am being charged. <laughs> you don't support the law enforcement. You have to call them police officers. Police officers. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, I'm Brazilian. Pull over, everybody. Okay. Pull over, pull over. Happens all the time. Pull over, everybody. Can I continue? Yes, okay. please. Okay. <laughs> and now I am being charged with a DUI. <laughs> yes. What do I do? <laughs> do you, I do? Uh, you, you did sound like you just pull over, got pulled over for DUI, but <laughs> well, if, if you get pulled over, if you get pulled over, you're not going to get charged with DUI until the officer does several things first. So uh, there are a number of ways you can help yourself. You don't have to roll your window down. You can uh, hold your, you know, there are a lot, there's a, actually a movement right now where they put up a sign and say, here's my ID, here's my registration. I'm not rolling my window down. They don't have to because all the officer can ask you for is your ID and your insurance and your proof of title at that point in time. So you just open a little bit of the window. So open a little, put it through and that's okay. it. Um, if you roll your window down, then the officer has to make independent observations to go further. Now, that's different if you're weaving back and forth and the officer sees you weaving. They already have probable cause to go beyond what they've just seen. If you're right. speeding or your window tints are too dark, that's enough to stop you but not to get to a DUI. I always tell uh, there, there's a risk that you run, um, of course, uh, when you have a DUI. The officer will then make you do sobriety tests. Um, um, I advise my clients not to do the tests. I advise them also not to blow in the breathalyzer. That convicts you. I mean, it's 100% guaranteed that if you blow over a .08, you're going to jail, and that's automatic but conviction. But I've, I've heard if you refuse to do it, you're automatically arrested. If, you're, if you refuse to do it, you might be arrested, or you might not, but you're not going to be convicted. And they have to still make independent observations to justify arresting it. If you don't do the tests, and you don't roll into the breathalyzer, at that point in time, all they have is their personal observations. And if they didn't see you weaving in and out of the road, and all they detected was an odor of an alcoholic beverage on your breath, that's not going to be enough to convict you. Okay. The downside to doing that, be very clear, is your license will be suspended for six months to a year, depending on prior DUIs or not. Regardless of whether you're convicted or not. Regardless <laughs> of whether you're convicted or not, because, bless you, God bless you, because the DMV and the police are two different entities. So a DMV you know, the back of your license says, by the privilege I have to drive, also means that I consent to breathalyzer, blood, and alcohol sobriety tests. If you don't, then your license can be suspended. Got but it. a suspended license is much better than a DUI conviction. Okay. But that's, a, that, you know, that's a choice or a risk that you run when you get pulled over. Okay. But the best thing you can do is don't drink and drive. Exactly. That's simple. Exactly. Yes, yeah, very simple. That's what it was for. Let's go to the phones. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is another one. There's another. Okay. So go okay. really quick because we are against I the I just got a bike and I am riding it to home. The the only thing is I don't have an endorsement. For how long can I ride without one? Never. Never. Okay. Never. Okay. You, you, Florida it? law is very clear. You cannot operate a motorcycle license without a motorcycle endorsement. And to get that, you have to take a certified motorcycle safety class. That's first. And then you go and apply for your motorcycle endorsement on your license. If you have either a temporary license or a permanent driver's license, you can take the class and then get your license. But you cannot ride without a motorcycle license. And if you do, then you will not be able to get a motorcycle license for years. Wow. Ooh, wow. Got it. So. All right. Hey, I learned to ride right. with you here. Right? I know. Yeah. That's awesome. That's we're going to awesome. do that next and month. We're going to have Robert yes, Snook back again. And you see, the, the people that ask uh, these questions for us uh, at at uh, at first sight seems uh, s simple things. Right. But you see. Uh, oh, if you remember a couple months ago, we talked about, you know, two bikes in the same lane. Yes. You know, and, and it's absolutely prohibited for you to have two cars in the same lane. But the exception to two in one lane is bikes. So motorcycles in Florida can drive side, you know, two abreast as they're riding down the road. And next month when we come bring you back, we're actually going to have a discussion about lane splitting Ooh. and lane sharing. That's going to be an interesting one. 
Yes, um, there is a lot of movement in USA uh, to, to allow allow the only California, right. only California. Uh, right, right now, now. just only, uh, only, but there is a lot of uh, petitions. Yep. Okay. So, so you call her? Yep. Well, actually, we're gonna we're gonna hold on because we have Junie Rose on the phone, but we're gonna get to her after our seven o'clock commercial break because somebody has to pay the bills. We'll be right back after this. Stand out from the crowd with your next helmet. Safety and technology meet style and design. Next helmets offer the coolest models and styles like the aggressive XT1 Raptor and the uber cool Switch. Next helmets exceed DOT standards and are available only at the best motorcycle accessory stores. Find the store nearest you at nextnorthamerica.com. When we ride, we must protect our eyes. Ed Schneider and Julie Maioli from Team USA to ride here. When we go for a ride, we're always protected with 7i Performance Eyewear. That's right, Ed. These high-tech sunglasses prevent dry eyes are super resistant and look great too. Learn more and get yours at 7i.com. <laughs> I think we're, we're live. I think, we're, I think, live. I think I, we're, we're live on WNN 1470 AM. This is USA Try.com. I think we need a lawyer again because we have a workplace accident here. No, 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 we're good. Okay, we're good. Okay. We're good. okay. Um, we, you know, for those of you watching us on USA Try.com slash live, Freddie, our producer here, just put on the screen again the keyword. 1992 show up at eagle rider either eagle rider miami or eagle rider fort lauderdale this saturday get a free oil change the first four bikes only free oil change and we have some uh, news yeah we're gonna we're, gonna we're gonna give yes. an update here free oil change free filter change and uh multi-point inspection and um yeah we all actually have mark Gregg saying here great show you guys rock thank you so much mark and by the way uh, we have to update uh, and some information here that we uh, gave earlier today for those of you riding with us and with Eagle Rider at the uh, their open house uh, on Sunday. Um, just an update. I have uh, mentioned before that there's one ride coming out of the Eagle Rider Fort Lauderdale store, one uh, coming out of Eagle Rider Miami store. In the fact, the one in Miami is uh, Miami is going to be the the final destination for the rides. Uh, but one is going to come out of Eagle Rider, Fort Lauderdale. The other one is going to come out of Eagle Rider, South Beach. That is right off Fifth Street, right off the Causeway, right there. Um, you know, it's a, uh, there's a there's a rental, a luxury rental car right next door. You can, if you want to ride with us, ride in a Lamborghini. Um, it's Ferrari. Your choice yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but uh, why ride a Ferrari when you can ride a Harley? Exactly, um, or BMW. India, <laughs> or BMW, <laughs> or a KTM. No, a KTM. No, no, you can't ride no, a you KTM. cannot. <laughs> Philistines. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So, so let's go really quick to the phones, uh, and uh, we have our favorite phone caller, as always, from Hoka Hey World. Hey, Junior Rose, how are you? Hey, Ed. Hey, Julie. Hello. Everything. How, hey, everything's great. What do you have from going on in the Hoka Hey world? Okay. Well, I wanted to tell you about our starting point. Um, we are teaming up with the Pallet Casino Spa and Resort. Yes. And that is owned and operated by the Pala Band of the Mission Indians. Wow. The, yeah. The Pallet Casino Spa and Resort includes a Las Vegas style casino with 2,000 sl plus slot machines, 81 table games, 15 poker tables, a 507 room hotel and 10,000 square foot full service spa, a salon that features 14 treatment rooms, a state of the art fitness center, swimming pools with 12 pri private poolside cabanas and dual temperature outdoor whirlpool hot tubs. Pa uh, Paula also offers 11 restaurants and 40,000 square foot of meeting and convention space. Paula Casino Spa and Resort is a AAA, four diamond award winning for 12 consecutive years. You sound like a I true spokesperson. We have got an amazing place for everyone to join us because, you know, of course, we encourage um, our riders, uh, family and friends to join us a couple days before the event. 
you know, our writers are asked to show up a couple of days ahead right. of time, so we love to give them things to do. And doesn't this sound like an amazing place? It does, but remember, you know, you, you have to sleep with your bike. You can't get a room there. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to leave. No, this is before the event. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're going to see we're gonna see all the Hokkaido riders, like, sleeping by the pool, right, uh, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> right or, 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 or by the poker tables. <laughs> That's right. Under them. <clears throat> that is awesome. I'm so happy to see that Hokahe is getting some big support there uh, from some big companies. Uh, you know you can always count with your safety riders, your media partners here, right, Juni? That's right. Absolutely. You guys are amazing. Awesome. Thank you so much for the call. And next week, we, we, you know, we're expecting your call again with more great news about the Hokahe. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye, Bye. Right. Right. Bye. All right. I will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. More good things to come because this is Brenda Martin's segment good things and uh, you know we already talked very about very good things migrant, good things yeah, very nice migrant kids toy run I mean it's been a toy run overload Jenny you know, Love so did an far. excellent job with that she, she I, I gotta tell Jenny Love uh, John Carmen G. Vermeer, Sardinia Carmen Sardinia oh my gosh they, I mean Carmen Sardinia her, her, her entire family you know blood family and adopted yeah. family was there helping that's amazing. Uh, you, you ha you, I mean, you have to witness. I can't wait for next year. You have to witness this event. You know, see the, the faces of these kids coming and getting their kids and seeing Santa. Uh, by the way, Santa Claus was <laughs> as real as he gets. <laughs> yes. And it uh, was um, amazing to see the, the riders uh, taking the, the kids by the hands to to choose the the the, the toys the toys and uh, i saw a woman with a kid and she looked at me uh in tears uh, uh the only thing that she can talk was you see it's priceless, it's priceless. <laughs> it is priceless. Yeah, it's amazing i mean it's if everybody amazing. everybody takes a minute and goes back to some point in their childhood and we all remember the best Christmas, the best gift we ever got. I Mine was Candyland, I got to admit. That was really cool. <laughs> um, but remember what it was like to get up and know Santa came? There's some kids out there who don't get that. With the beaten cookie and the, the half a glass of milk. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the carrot that yep. we you know took a bite of. I'm a Jewish kid and I had that. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, that is, that's what makes um, motorcyclists, uh, bikers who have heart, that, you know, good things happen and, all over the United and States. And Carmen Sardinia told us uh, uh, something that uh, you always tell. Uh, motorcyclists is great people. Please don't be scared don't about be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> yes, he's, he's just really a big teddy bear. Yeah, you know. Um, yes, yeah, she told you exactly the same thing that Brandon always says. Yeah, it, 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 you know, I, I know a lot of, a lot of motorcyclists all over the United States. And, you know, the bigger they are and the hairier they are, chances are that the bigger heart they have. I'll tell you that right now. Let's, yep. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> there you go. Let's, let's run a little video Yeah. that shows... Something about good things, talking about good things. Good it's things. Um, something that happened this weekend all around the United States. So take a look at this video and we'll talk about it when we so come Freddie, back. So, we're going to run the uh, Reads Across America and... Uh, And some other men for a job well done. Today was an opportunity to honor the legacy, memory, commitment, and history of our nation's heroes so that we'll never forget the cost of freedom. They folded up a flag and told my mom and dad, We're proud of your son. I'm proud to be on this peaceful piece of property. I'm on sacred ground and I'm in the best of company. And I'm thankful for those, thankful for the things I've done. And I can rest in peace. I'm one of the chosen ones. I made it to Arlington. I know that for family members who might have someone buried here, they might want to come out and 
find specifically their loved one, but that might not be always possible. So for us to have the honor to wing that for that person, I just feel like they need a moment to be honored and, and, and loved. It's for us to, to come in to do that for them. It's an honor for everybody to get out here today and honor those who have passed. And we're thankful for those, thankful for the things we've done. And we can rest in peace, because we are the chosen one. We made it to Arlington. Yes, dust to dust. Don't cry for us, cause we made it to Arlington, Arlington. But so we're back here. here we go. Reese, here we go. That was Reese Across America. And um, 70,000 volunteers from all over the United States simultaneously along with Arlington National Cemetery and all across in every national cemetery all over the world, not just the United States, there's a wreath place on every um, soldier that ever fought in any war and um, whoever's buried in the National Cemeteries, when, which is family members. Um, a big shout out to Grant Booth from Lakeland because I was scrolling through Facebook and that's where I find my good things. So if anybody out there has good things that they want to share with us, um, put it on my Facebook page. You can find me at USA to Ride dot com and um please share whatever good things you got going on and you have you have, you have an email address you and can we use you can community. also send yep. it to community at usa to ride dot com but um i found it from grant booth from lakeland florida and um he says it was a great ride and for a very special event um, in Sarasota National uh, Veterans Cemetery, there was, um, let's see, Michelle Brudovic and Trisha Fox, Gibbons Dorvey, Bruce Fuller, Patty, uh, Patty Potter were amongst those who attended the Bushnell National Cemetery. American Legion riders post-237 had 22 bikes out of their post that ended up going to the Bushnell National Nice. And um, actually, the Walmart dis uh, distribution center had 2,000 bikers show up. What? Yeah, 2,000 bikers that showed up to do this event. Wow. And um, Reads Across, uh, Across America, you can find all the information on our website, because we're going to put a link yep. to that, usatoride.com. And you can find um, what their mission is. Um, their mission is to remember, honor, teach, um, and carry out um, by coordinating wreath laying ceremonies in a specific Saturday in December at Arlington, as well as veteran cemeteries and other locations in all 50 states, ceremonies at sea, and 24 national cemeteries on foreign soil. Wow. So that is definitely a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and I always suggest, I've, I've, I have to do um, a little work at uh, one of the national cemeteries right here, the one in Boynton Beach uh, yeah. a couple uh, months ago. And, um, you know, if you've never been to a national cemetery, you know, this is a good time of the year to go. Just pay, you know, respect and pay tribute to those who sacrifice their lives, yeah. you know, so we can have, we can enjoy the freedom that we have. Uh, it only takes a minute to just go there and just, you know, you just throw a few words to the wind and that's all it takes. Um, listen, Brenda, I know that uh, next week we're going to have a special show. A special show? Yep. Guess what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I am going to sing a Christmas carol. A motorcycle Christmas a carol. A motorcycle Christmas <laughs> carol. 
and this is great um a few of my girlfriends years and years ago we each uh changed the words to a very familiar christmas carol so you'll have to tune in guys to listen to what i'm going to sing and i'm going to have copies for everybody to sing oh along. my god i was afraid of that. you told me you're going to bring a, a the bongo so i can yeah, i can follow bring it okay, the bongos, I'll, okay I'll, I'll play the bongo some bells it'll be a really oh my god, good christmas show the first the first show with live music that's at usa it. to ride nothing wrong with that i love it yep. <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's a good thing all right brenda so we'll be. that we'll is be. a good thing so anybody wants to share any stories with brenda martin please you can contact Mama B at community at usatri.com. Share your stories. You know, we might actually have you as a guest here at USHRI to tell your story live that to would be our nice. audience. Um, okay, so moving on here, it's we time. We have the speed moment. We have speed moment. Speed moment <laughs> with Julie Maioli is brought to you by Moto Cafe, where you find all the gear you need to ride safely and in style. Find top brands like Denise, Showy, Array, Alpine Stars, and of course, the helmets that we use next helmets at Moto Cafe. They're easy to find at 3556 North Ocean Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale, right on A1A between Oakland Park and Commercial Boulevard. And by the way, they'll beat any legitimate price you find when you go there and mention that you heard about their store on USA to Ride. And tonight we have two guests to share yes. the spotlight with Julie Maioli. We got Peter Allen Schultz right there, yes. um, right next to Brenda, and of course the crazy Mark Allen. The crazy. <laughs> And you guys, X Beamer, X Beamer. Oh no, I'm still no, he's still Beamer. Right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. He races sorry. with a Beamer. Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. He, he just he just won't go for a 3,200 mile off road on a Beamer. He would rather take the KTM. Which, okay. by the way, he took the KTM to go on our ride to Alamorada last week. I should have taken it's a not jet a problem. <laughs> yeah. All kind of bikes are invited. <laughs> right. It's not a problem. How bad was the rain coming back? Just so I know. Ten times worse than the way down. Are you serious? It was really bad. Wow. Yes, it because was, there were cars pulled over on Card Sound Road with their blinkers on, not even trying to ride. Are you serious? Yeah, the only reason I could do it is I'm not going to hydroplane on Navi's. Remember, right. remember the the guy that was with the Yamaha. Yes, he had the all the the, the <laughs> panel uh, down uh, with the the rain. Yes. Yeah, he just short, he just shorted everything. On his yes, body. just. Just a display, just a display. Everything yes. else was working fine. Ken and Moore, our friend at the from South oh, Florida wow. Riders Club. Not <laughs> the Beamer or the KTM, though. No. Yes, the Beamer. Don't hey, have my this Har kind the of Harley problems. just was cruising through it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and I was nice and warm on my couch. Oh, you guys <laughs> missed a great event. Okay. Just a good ride. But so, and you saw that our guest are using uh, is using a Max Carbon helmet. Oh, Peter. Yeah. Are you yeah. yeah. wearing a Max yes. helmet? Yeah. I oh. look. I look at that. Uh, the okay. first thing that I I saw a Max Carbon. Look at that. Have, yeah. you, have, you, have you been wearing a Max for a while now? Love it. Light. You know, great. Yeah. Heat for Florida. For how, for how long you've had your helmet? A couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. That's yeah. great. They're great coming. Helmet. They're coming out with a great line for the 2016. You have to see 2016 Carbon, the pure Carbon, new one. I I will have mine for sure. <laughs> Not cheap, I'm sure. Not cheap. <laughs> when I saw Hale's helmet, I thought there was a new program of giving guests free helmets. From um, no, we normally, I mean. uh, no, <laughs> we normally no, we normally give like post-it note blocks, and they're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's just the beginning. Yes, yes. Exactly. You know, we may you be giving away all. Yes. Listen, you know, to 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 Nex's defense, uh, Nex has been amazing. You know, donating helmets to great charity causes, uh, to twisted ribbons. Twisted ribbons. Uh, they donated a nice helmet. Yeah, to yes. uh, the uh, you know, for the the fundraising for the, the Pugri showers. Pugri yes. Legacy Memorial for uh, Ray to raise uh, money for the animals. That that was great. So Nex, both Nex and Seven I. Uh, have been amazing with you know the, the our the social causes in South Florida here. So, all right, but let's talk about uh, track road racing. racing. And road and racing. We have a story that uh, seems that uh, didn't finish in the last show with Mark uh, about uh, the about tumbling down. <laughs> yes, uh, trying to to oh, climb. Yeah. Uh, did, I, did I not finish that story? Or am I trying to forget this? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Basi basically, what he said is that after the sixth attempt, that, yes. that you change your route, but we don't know what happened after okay. that. So basically, that was it. After the sixth attempt, I, I realized that everybody just, was just one second. Mark, for for, th for those who have not heard the story, 
Uh, Mark Allen did a 3,200 mile trip uh, along the Continental Divide from the border coast, of Mexico coast, to yes. border of uh, border to border. Oh, border, border, to border, border yes. Yeah. Uh, from the border of Mexico to the border of Canada. And in one of his episodes, when, when we asked him uh, two weeks ago, uh, what is the thing that, you know, he really he will never forget about this trip, was the fact that you got to a climb and you tried to climb. Uh, well, first of all, you're going, you're going the, the opposite way as uh, everybody does of that route. You are a rebel. You're going opposite direction yeah. than everybody Against. else has taken. Yeah. Against yes. the grain. Against Everybody's the going down here and he's going up here. Kudos on that one. <laughs> it sounds like something I would have done 20 years and, ago. And then, then uh, you know, you got to a hill that you thought you could go up on, the, on your KTM. And, of course, you couldn't do Ooh. it on the first attempt or the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth. And the sixth. And the sixth. No, so I finally, basically, I... I I, I succumbed to the laws of physics, stuck my tail between my legs, went all the way back down the mountain, went around the mountain, and continued. But, oh, uh, okay. oh, so you went around the mountain. Oh, yes. I, there was no other option. There's okay. no roads other than that. Sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if you hear the description, uh, Mark, I mean, tell uh, every, every time you had a, a routine, every time that you tumble back down, you had a routine. Tell us about the routine. I mean, the worst part wasn't falling off the bike, flipping over backwards. The worst part was that once the bike settles, you now have to take all the gear off of the bike because it's too heavy to lift on the side of a mountain. You then have to drag the bike on its side, you know, listening to every rock scratch, every single piece of the bike, and hopefully not break off the shift lever. Drag it around so that it's facing downhill. Then you put in, by the way, it's 50 pounds of gear that you have to take off the bike. Then you push it very quickly onto its wheels, and as soon as it's not on its side, it starts sliding down the mountain. <laughs> so you have to jump on it, slide it down to the bottom of the mountain, which was about a thousand feet down. Um, Come back. Catch your breath, drink some water, hike back up the mountain, collect all your gear, which you can carry in one trip. Right. Bring it down to the bike, load Six it all up, times. and hit it again. Yes. Six <laughs> times. No. P Peter, okay. Peter you, 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 I know your passion is uh, uh, road racing. I mean, you don't even ride on the streets anymore, do you? You know, I had a bad accident a couple couple Just years ago. Just pull the mic up a little bit. On the street, and uh, I, I try to ride as little as possible. Okay. I love, you know, riding the bike. And, uh, you know, going to the track I found was a, a, a better option for me. Um, much safer. Uh, I learned to be a better rider. I, I learned to really learn to appreciate and how to ride a motorcycle. And um, just have had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, have you done any off off road stuff like that? No, <laughs> never, never been an off road guy. But you know, we, um, Mr. Allen and I, were talking earlier, and we were talking about the guys who are accomplished racers start in the beginning off road. A lot of the the great racers, the top level guys in MotoGP, all started when they were very young, and they started you know off road dirt biking. So did Julie, right, Julie? I mean, you started your your racing career on the dirt bike. On dirt DT, bikes too. DT 180 Yamaha, two two um, strokes. Yes, two strokes. Two strokes. Yeah. Two strokes. Yes. 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 Oil oh. burner. <laughs> how, how, how did you, how did you get into the uh, road racing? You know, I I'm I'm not a road racer per se. I guess you'd call me a kind of a track junkie. Track, track, yeah. And uh, you know, just kind of really wanted to see what what I could do, you know, on the track and kind of see what my motorcycle could do. Um, got together, found out who was kind of maybe the premier, some, some of the more uh, accomplished racers here in South Florida. And, and I got together with a gentleman by the name of Tim Hunt, who uh, Mr. Allen knows. And uh, he really taught me how... I love how you call him Mr. Allen. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Yeah, we call him names. Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mark. Mark. Yeah, anyway, Mark... Mark actually has raced with him and, and uh, a few other guys that I've gotten some instruction from to help me out a lot on the track. Sean Dwyer is one of them. I know you've interviewed right. him before. And just it's been a lot of fun just really getting to learn really what a bike can do and really how to ride it. And, um, you know, I think a lot of guys could really benefit from going from the street to the track because, you know, it's just they want to be on the gas and they want to ride the bike fast and you know it's just not a good it's not a good mix you know here in south florida it, let me ask you a question for actually the three of you because it's interesting because you, you don't compete right peter no your passion is going on the, on the track and and mm -hmm. just letting you letting all of the, on the on the on the on Competing the track against there. myself you know my my time just pushing your limits mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. how and when do you cross the bend this question is for actually the three of you 
Um, because it's so funny because a lot of people that does what Peter do eventually will say, well, I want to raise other people. I want to, I don't want to just try and beat myself with my time. I want to try and, you know, where do you cross that bridge? When do you decide, you know what, I don't want to just try to m make a better time. I want to, I really want to, I want to compete against other people. I'll, I'll take a crack at that. Um, kind of a complex problem. First of all, even when you're racing, if you're doing it right, you're still competing against yourself. Right. You really are. You're, you, you actually, it behooves you to try and block the other racers until you absolutely have no chance to block them out of the way and, and run your race. I mean, that's what's so amazing about Lorenzo. That guy is a machine. I mean, the reason they call him a metronome is that he's hitting those laps. And I don't know how to explain to you how insanely difficult it is for somebody to string together a lap, much less you know, 34 laps with a consistency that that guy does. I have a theory. Mark Mark is right behind him, ah. throw, throwing everybody <laughs> out of the race. <laughs> he wasn't blocking for him all the races, but we'll revisit that on another day, or it'll be all day. Because <laughs> you even haven't heard my comments on that. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, but then you get to a certain point that, that your your mm -hmm. ego starts to get into the in, in the way or to assist you. And that that's what depends whether you're good or not. How was for you, Julie? Because you were part of the first all-female grid in Brazil. So, what brought you from like? I know, I know you did track days for years. Uh, actually, uh, the invitation uh, comes uh, just uh, because we really like to do something different. Because uh, doing track days with men. Uh, was uh, hard because we are uh, always uh, apart. Like you, s you saw that message I, I told you before. Yes. Uh, did it, uh, for in my country is considered uh, a Men's male sport. Yeah. Uh, sport. They had you guys outside on the track at separate times. No, no. Oh, apart. We we, we do together, okay. but uh, in that mo in some moment we decide that we have to have our space. And yeah. try to do something different. It was the, the, so, the, the girls decided to yes, push so the guys away. <laughs> we started something and we started to, to compete. Mm -hmm. It was our our goal in that moment. So I, I started to push myself to be competitive. And in a moment I was doing with guys. Mm -hmm. And my training was with guys because all of the other girls is in, uh, uh, around the, the country. Because girls rule and boys drool. Hey. Hey. You know what? We are, we're still majority here, Brenda. <laughs> uh, and was that? Uh, and uh, the the things becomes fun, and uh, it's like you you told. Uh, we decide that you have to be better and better and better and better. Doesn't matter if he's guys or mm. girls. That's it. Awesome. Listen, we're going to definitely have both of you back here because I think this conversation can go a lot longer, including the one with Mark Marcus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Rossi, please. Yeah, okay. Okay. But right now, we're going to say goodbye to all friends of USA to Ride, Carmen, Sardinia, and family, the Miami Dade Commissioner, Jose Pepe Diaz, Moto Cafe, Chris Nelson at 7i by, by Panoptics, Eric Spray, Karen Myers, Monaco, the staff at Alamorada Fish Company, Marco and Mavo Hernandez, the Abuelos. Mark Gregg at Eagle Rider, Jeff Jacobs, Josh Irizarry, Joe Andres, Wrangler, Western Jeans, David Enriquez, Robert Sanuk, Victor Quintero, Rachel Pace, Marang, Tony West, Chuck Riedel, Jenny Love, John Chief Ramirez, and the Chrome Knights Motorcycle Association. And why, why, why is the, the word, the keyword? 1992. 1992. Show up at Eagle Rider yes. Saturday morning. We'll see you guys next Tuesday for a special one and a half hour from 6 p.m. to 7.30 next Tuesday. USA to ride at WNN 1470 AM. Good night, everybody. With songs. Yes. You have been listening to USA to ride the show that takes you for a ride through the best of motorcycle living in the U.S. Join us next week for another exciting show. Until then, safe rides, everyone.